Monday. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the PH Max Coyotes podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. I'm Leah Merrill here with Craig Morgan and Steve Peters. And today we are thrilled to be joined by a very special guest as the Isabel Cup comes to Tempe, Arizona yes. this Sunday. Nice. We're excited to welcome PHF Commissioner Reagan Carey to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Well, we're first of all, thanks again for making the time for us. Um, you know, we're, we were really excited when we heard that the PHF championship was coming to Mullet Arena on March 26th. And uh, we just want to know why Tempe? Why not? I mean, I, I just saw that <laughs> intro. And it, it, looked, it looked beautiful and warm, and uh, that's always a win. But uh, yeah, we we just value as you as you might have seen last year. We were in uh, Tampa Bay, and and certainly just trying to grow the game wherever we can. And I know there's a ton of great work going on in Arizona, and for us to be part of that and make sure that we continue to expose new markets to uh, the best of women's hockey. Uh, that's part of our commitment to the game. So we're excited to to head in your direction and and do that over the weekend. Reagan, I'm sensing a pattern here. Tampa Bay here. Um, <laughs> Bahamas next. Yeah. I don't know what's on you. <laughs> That's a smart hockey person right there. The planet where it's warm. Exactly, yeah. No, we can go to Flin Flon or we can go to Tempe. <laughs> yeah. I have, like, I've done some research. I've seen the uh, hockey rinks on cruise ships, so you never know where we'll <laughs> <You never> go. <know. laughs> well, can you take us a little bit inside how this plan was conceived and executed? And, and did your old pal Lindsey Fry have a hand in any step of this process? Yeah, uh, Lindsay's been great and certainly uh, one of the first calls I made when we were looking at the opportunity to bring uh, the game to the West Coast and uh, to team up with another NHL market and, and organization. So uh, just knowing that we want to be aligned with people that are doing the same work and as committed as we are to growing the game. And uh, that was an easy assessment when we got to Arizona. So uh, absolutely chatting with Lindsay made it even more exciting and more fun to be able to reconnect here over the weekend. But uh, yeah, we're just looking forward to reinforcing all the great work that's already happening in your market. Do you actually get down then? I, I assume there's, there's been some a look at Mullet Arena at some point to get all the details ironed out, all that sort of stuff? Yes, we do. We had a few site visits and had a number of people from our, our league out there. And again, knowing our relationship with Lindsay, it was uh, we got some inside scoop as well, but uh, we're really excited. It's a perfect fit for us and a beautiful facility for us to go and showcase uh, the highlight of our season, the Isabel Cup. So you talked to obviously the weather is a factor, but you know, right now the league is very much in the Northeast, maybe Midwest area. Is there any desire to expand the game um, more westward? You know, Montreal is the latest expansion team, but is there a desire for more expansion since Montreal? Yeah, certainly we're, we're always looking to team up with the right people uh, and the right markets. And uh, so far we've had a ton of luck. I mean, we launched uh, Montreal in, in a relatively short amount of time uh, leading into this season. And they did a tremendous job, not just on the ice, but growing the game in that area and really getting a lot of energy uh, around the province for the uh, the PHF and, and girls you know, showing interest and enjoying the sport. So, you know, we know we have a, a high responsibility to to do that uh, anywhere we go. So whenever we can team up with the right people that have the right vision and uh, the longevity that we're looking for in partners, then, uh, then you can't count out where we'll be. It's certainly not uh, geographical at this point. I uh, want to talk a little bit about the league, the state of the game, et cetera. I had a talk with Lindsay the other night, and she mentioned that there's some outside criticism of the league. It's basically the why don't you have everything right away crowd? Um, you know, why aren't you selling out games? Why aren't you in more markets, et cetera? But there has been significant progress, I, I, I think you will say, over the past year, including a major investment and an increase of team payrolls that, that more, than, more than doubled payroll. Uh, what do you want people to know about, first, the financial state of the league? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for asking. And uh, that's that's really a lot of what needs to happen. We're in this new era of the PHF. This league has been around since 2015, uh, but this is a new phase for it and uh, almost entirely brand new uh, staff and leadership and uh, new investors and ownership. And that has really allowed us, as you've said in the last, you know, uh, 
18 months or so to accelerate our progress. And um, so while any young th- uh, starting league is always going to have their challenges, I think yeah. you're seeing what is the benefit of we we made it over that really challenging, critical stage. And now we're into that, uh, you know, thrival mode with the league and uh, we're just getting started. So we, we can't wait to uh, demonstrate what we've been doing. But as we've seen in, uh, in our games so far this season, a lot of, uh, you know, nearly 90 percent capacity at our games and a lot of the teams and markets. And we just had a lot of records for the last semifinal playoffs that are happening over the weekend in the final game tonight in Toronto. So, uh, you know, we feel really good about the future of the PHF. Just diving into that a little bit more on a per player basis. Um, what does daily life look for them? Look like for them? We uh, I've, I've talked about this when I covered the NBA and looked at the WNBA. Players have to do more in order to earn a living. They have to go play abroad or they have to work another job. What, is, what does day-to-day look like for the players right now in your league? Well, we're trying to change that landscape very quickly. And, uh, you know, even uh, being able to reflect on the time with Lindsey Fry and, you know, we're on the search for where can these players play when they uh, graduate from college and do it consistently and stay in the game because certainly physically and in their career span, they could uh, continue to have great trajectory there. But, um, you know, financially and just realistically, it was very difficult and challenging. That was only a handful of years ago. So to see how quickly things have grown and to know that we're leading the charge for salary cap in women's pro sports, not just uh, the game of ice hockey. So, um, you know, we know that there's a responsibility to make sure these players can be full-time professional athletes, and we're getting closer to that with every season. And uh, this is a significant jump into this next season with the 1.5 salary cap. So, um, you know, we're, we're getting there, and um, we're being mindful of how to support players along the way. I got to look at your previous life when you were the director of the hockey director of women's hockey for USA hockey. You're involved in Olympics and national, uh, the national program, a lot of success for team USA, but look how that's evolved. Like you can go back a decade, 10, 12 years. And it was, it honestly was a two team race, Canada and the U S now you're starting to see the women's program develop worldwide. And we look at here in Arizona, how much it's grown with Lindsay's support, Matt shot, his support and how much the Kachinas have grown. So in your former role, you're seeing all this expansion of the girl and women's game. What trends are you seeing nationwide and where does the focus need to be on girls and women's hockey in the United States? Well, I appreciate the observation of uh, even the growth in the international game. And and uh, you'll see our international players have doubled in this last season. And, and the global game aspect is important to uh, the, the movement and how fast we can get there. And uh, it, it's true. We heard a lot about U.S. and Canada and even whether women's ice hockey should remain an Olympic sport. Um, and that prompted a lot of collaboration and a lot of work uh, between a lot of leaders across the globe for our sport to make sure that now you don't hear that comment anymore. And it's just an exciting uh, world championship tournaments. Those are coming up. The Olympics have been uh, terrific in accelerating that competitive drive across a number of teams. So, um, you know, the growth of the game and the health of the game is strong. And that's thanks to, again, just so many levels of growth. And that's at the NCAA level. It's it's uh, Lindsay Fry doing all the work she's doing in, uh, in your area and replicate that in all the markets. Um, you know, we've seen even growth in adult women picking up the game at a high rate. So I think our, our sport is just, you know, the more exposure we can provide in moments like this to be able to bring big games to new markets, uh, people are getting excited about it and, and joining the movement. How has your role with USA Hockey helped you with this role? I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to be a commissioner of a sports league. So (laughs) what are some of the unique challenges that you kind of experience and how has your USA Hockey roles helped you with that? Uh, well, you know, you have to have a clear focus on what success looks like. And uh, while that can, can be kind of obvious on a national team or Olympic team, you know, we, we had a lot of uh, metrics for success and that was on and off the ice. And I think that's what a lot of our players can be proud of. And that's the same thing we want to do with the, with the PHF. You know, we want to have a, a entertaining, you know, high quality uh, experience for our fans and, and our partners, but also uh, making sure that we're positively moving the needle for women's sports and equality and uh, everything that does inspire that next generation to do bigger things. So, uh, you know, everything is competitive. We're very impatient. We want to get things done quickly. And, uh, you know, 
see the future here even faster. But uh, we're just working as a, as a team to make sure we get there and uh, you know have what feels like a gold medal at the end of this. I just want to bring it back to the world game for just a second because it people that follow our show and we talk about the NHL a lot and Trevor Zegras, the skill level that a player like that has. I I just don't know if you remember this winter the, the young the uh, Slovakian under eighteen yeah. uh, Nila Lupasinova her puck skill for Team Slovak absolutely world class elite she's fourteen <laughs> fourteen so that my question is w- when will we see her in your league and how do you distribute <laughs> the players amongst the league is it is it a draft is it based on geography like how do you pick your teams. Well, we uh, yeah, I hope that uh, that we'll be talking to her when it's appropriate, which is a little, a little bit older, uh, but yeah. we'll we'll get there soon <laughs> enough. Um, and uh, you know, we have we have great um, collaboration with the IHF and a lot of our staff, uh, you know, volunteer a considerable amount of time to help in these uh, different countries and elevating the game and pr- participating in the high performance camp. So, you know, we're well. Uh, uh, versed in who's out there on the global landscape, the U uh, eighteen level as well. So it's great to see that that U eighteen tournament has grown so much, and it's really I think inspired a lot of young girls across the globe to get in the game uh, at a more serious level. So <clears throat> we're eager to have her, uh, whatever team she's ready to play for. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, right now we don't. Um, we we used to have a draft, and going back to some of the questions you had sure. earlier, we. Um, we just feel like we really need to understand what the players need and sure. where we are a, as a league. And for for us to make a decision to eliminate the draft so that players can continue to have what they need as a support system, whether that's in you know other uh, financial situations and, and incomes and or just their family situations, you know, until we can fully pay to uh, move players where they need to, to move to and um, you know offer even more resources, then it's I think the responsible thing to do. But you know we taken big strides in that category with medical benefits and, and these higher salaries. So we're getting closer to, to reinstating the, the draft format. But right now, um, teams, it may, makes it more accountable for teams, too, because they have to uh, put in offers along with everybody else. And it's a it's a nice balance between the player and the organization. We'll talk about Lindsay Fry a little more. Yeah. Everybody that's involved in this community, the hockey community, to hear her face is very recognizable, both with the Coyotes and the girls and women's game. She was a fantastic college athlete. She played on the East Coast because that's where the opportunities were. I know you can't answer this specifically. Two questions. Do we ever hope for a day that a team like ASU, who now has Division I men's hockey, can step up? They've got a, a, uh, a- club C- hockey, oh, yeah, ACHA, club. club for women now, and, and the, they have a, a, a women's team for ASU. Do we hope someday that they can get an NCAA team out West, which we would love to see? And secondly, what was your experience like with the NCAA hockey and this weekend where you got to attend the final four and how important that is as a feeder system for your league? You know, in the last last week, I was in NHL meetings in Florida uh, and then went to one of our PHF playoff games in Boston, then went to Duluth for the NCAA. And I think just that whole scope of just how positive the trajectory is. The NHL meetings were not about women's hockey or girls hockey, but almost every presentation or every league that got up to to speak um, or mentioned just the growth, whether it's in women's officiating, uh, just having more females that played the game in their front office. So uh, it's just really uh, rewarding to see, but it, it it just sets the tone for how healthy we are and where we're headed in the future. And, and Lindsay's a great example of that. Um, and even Hockey Inc., uh, you know, doing a lot of great work out there to yeah. make sure college programs and uh you know arizona might be one of them to to have that opportunity to expand and and add with the women's program so you know you look at 1998 when the olympics first uh started for women's hockey and at the time it was about 14 college programs and now we're you know over 40 and uh, that's going to continue to climb so every five to eight years the growth in this game uh, for the women's side is just tremendous and it's hard to predict what the next five years will look like all right, let's talk about this matchup coming. At the, oh, yeah, let's get into that. Um, oh, yeah, boy. and by the way, Pete is from Minnesota. Yeah. I'm Minnesota surprised Native. he hasn't mentioned it yet. <laughs> so we kind of know who he's going to be rooting for. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a shocker, which is kind of cool for the league, first of all, to have that kind of parity where they can knock off the top seed. So Minnesota is going to be here after knocking off Boston, and then the Toronto-Connecticut winner, of course, will be decided tonight. What are your thoughts on the championship game here, the potential matchup 
And will you get to spend a little time here in the Valley, given some of the places you've been hanging out recently that <laughs> don't offer our weather? <laughs> well, I, I look forward to that. And uh, I, I'll be there, I think, coming in on Thursday. So I, I look forward to you know taking in some of the, the local scene. Uh, but as for the matchups, we've got a, a great battle here to determine who will play Minnesota. Tonight is uh, Connecticut and Toronto in Toronto. So uh, we're all eager to see how that game unfolds. But I think it just speaks uh, to the competitive level of our, our league right now and the depth of it. Um, you know, we, we made some adjustments to our playoff format so that we could see just how uh, competitive and, um, you know, how great playoff hockey is no matter what uh, league you're in. So we uh, couldn't have predicted exactly what happened here and, and really excited to see Minnesota coming on strong. And uh, it's going to be a great championship on Sunday night. Yeah, the mullet is a great atmosphere. I, I wanted to ask before we let you go here about the trophy itself, because hockey has a tradition of great trophies, obviously the Stanley Cup, which we have a mini replica. replica. <laughs> We've never seen it here in Close Arizona. We hope to see it someday. In Arizona. Yeah. Um, but the Isabel Cup is another really cool trophy. Do you know anything about the creation of the Isabel Cup, how it came about and what the uh, the idea was behind the design, what the inspiration was? Yeah, well, the, the, it's uh, great. We were just at the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto during our All-Star game and uh, had Isabel there along with Stanley, their relatives. Uh, wow. So, you know, we we have a lot of pride in the uh, the history of our sport. And um, you'll see throughout all of our all of our big games and uh, just throughout our, our league, the emphasis on honoring the past pioneers. And, um, you know, Isabel is a great way to way to do that and honor, um, you know, again, that connection to the Stanley Cup, but also just the women's side of the game and um, and understand where we came from so that we can, you know, be good custodians here as we, uh, you know, get things moving in this this moment. But um, yeah, we're excited to have Isabel Cup. It, Isabel just uh, received a little bit of uh, a touch up and uh, is ready to go Polished <laughs> for the big event on Sunday. So coming in from Toronto, um, you know, just getting, uh, I, I wouldn't say any work done, but uh, polished up. <laughs> <laughs> so Reagan, I, I, as we know, and we've established already, I, I'm will be rooting for the Whitecaps from Minnesota. He a lot be. of Minnesota yeah. women on this team. A lot. It's a heavy Minnesota roster. So obviously they're the better team without even looking. I know that. <laughs> Come on. No, but oh I'm from I, I, Toronto. So. Specific, can, can you give us specifics about the games? When, where, how, where do we get tickets? That kind of information. Yeah, absolutely. The tickets are available, you know, through uh, our website, PHF, as well as uh, I believe I'm all at Arena and uh, appreciate all the support that the Coyotes have, have provided in promoting uh, the game as well. So uh, we're, we're eager to see as many hockey fans and potentially new hockey fans out there on Sunday night. Um, and uh, we'll be there throughout the weekend. So we'll have some of our players joining in different hockey events uh, and hopefully uh, different experiences throughout the weekend. I'm not the only one that wants to enjoy uh, the warm uh, Arizona scene. So our players are very excited about it as well and looking forward to seeing you in person. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Reagan, we can't thank you enough for your time and really looking forward to this Sunday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks. You can hold it here every year, by the yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine with us. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds Thanks, good to me. Perfect. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, awesome. Well, I'm excited about it because of its proximity right after the Coyotes game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, you don't fantastic. even have to leave. We have talked. We talked. Uh, I think it was you that mentioned this. We we talked about wanting a doubleheader at Mullet at yes. some point, and ASU and the Coyotes never pulled it off. Well, we're getting it now. Yeah, we're getting the Coyotes and a championship game. We'll actually see a championship trophy <laughs> on the ice in Arizona. So well, we saw it in for high school. How too, it, we did see that. If yes. you had to, how would you kill a few hours in between the Coyotes game? Well, would you wow. go to Four Peaks? Talk about a segue. Four Peaks. I mean, I can't think of a better place. You could walk. You literally could walk. You could ride one of those scooters, or to you four can, peaks. or you can Uber. Because you should drive responsibly when you drink at Why? Four Peaks. Buddy, who's Uber? Even I'm old and lazy, and I'd still want I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Peaks? But it, yes. what a great yep. place to go in between the Coyotes game on Sunday and this game. Um, the Coyotes game's at noon. This game's at 6.30 at Mullet. Um, so stop by Four Peaks, grab a couple beers, um, and enjoy. And there's a lot of great stuff coming up at Four Peaks right now, including the Arizona Cardinals that are in the NFL draft picking third overall. That's April 27th. They got a new coach, a new GM. It's a big opportunity. We got Bo Bo's sitting here. off to the side. Huh. <laughs> um, they're talking about it daily. <laughs> um, so it's the best. Four Peaks is the best place to take in this pivotal moment and the rest of the NFL draft at Four Peaks. So you must be 21 or older to drink and enjoy responsibly. And if you don't have time 
to go to Four Peaks. Maybe you're just coming down for the game. Stop by Circle K okay. when you're stopping to get some gas and head inside. Try out some of the snacks. We talk about the snacks all Orange the time. Slices. That we love. Um, salt, salt and pepper chips. Amazing. Elite. Um, and we're really excited to partner with our friends at Circle K. And we have an amazing giveaway opportunity. So if you want to get a $500 gas gift card, all you have to do is text PHNX to 31310 for an opportunity to win that $500 gas card. So th th this ends this week, so make sure you do it now. Text PHNX to 31310 to win a $500 gas gift card. Well, that was a really cool interview for me. Mm. It's really cool to see the growth of the women's game. Um, you should see it here in Arizona, Leo. The, the, the casinos, casinos. I mean, yeah. All over the social media and Twitter on their runs to the national to championship tournaments again this season. How much that program has grown in such a short time here in the Valley. It's becoming a premier program across the country. And it's from efforts from from players, former players like Lindsay that are helping making that happen. So that's really exciting. Grassroots, Grassroots. baby. Yeah. I, love, I love what you talked about, too, with ASU. Like, I have this, my wife, the incomparable Tara Lennon, who you, you know. Yeah. Spent some time with this <laughs> yes. past weekend. Chef Tara. Played Barista women's Tara. hockey at Wesleyan University in Connecticut. So I might be rooting for Connecticut if they... And I'm rooting for Toronto. So we is, all have interesting. rooting interest. interest. By but, the way, that game's at three Arizona time. Today? So we might have to turn it on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But it, I just, I like, I imagine it at all levels, right? That's when you know you've, you've really hit it. Obviously, Minnesota has this already. Minnesota has great yeah. youth hockey. It has great high school hockey. Got great, great college. Women's they just hockey. Have the state it has champions. great college hockey. And it has the wild. So... Yeah. They've got it, and 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 of course, a team in the championship game of, yeah. of this league that's that we're talking we about be. now. That's what you want to be. Yeah. That's when you know you made it as a hockey market. You've hit it on all levels. I never would have dreamed. I was sitting in there. Who was I talking to the other night at Mullet? Which is just crazy to think that there's a Division One college hockey team in yeah. this state. Like I, I go back to when I was at newspapers and the columnist there. I love throwing them under the bus. Mark Ammons. <laughs> think the NHL will ever come to Phoenix? Not a chance. And so here we, here we are now. Look at the growth in this state and look at it at all levels. Again, Lindsey Fry doing unbelievable work with the Kachinas. They have their own rink now in Mesa. It's really cool to see the growth of hockey. And this is another event that can help in that regard. Maybe someday we'll have teams, and I, I, we'll I have did, a team out here. What would it, what would you nickname it? What would oh, be well, it? somebody had a good idea yeah, the in the chat. The Scorpions. I don't I like it. it. And I will say it was really cool to see the chat talking about this too because – like right now, it's it's a small league of seven teams, but the way that their salary cap has doubled twice since they they were founded, right. um, I Going mean it's, it's only up from said, here. Wow. And as we see on the grassroots level of the women's game, that's only gonna create more maybe demand for more teams to accommodate more players. You talked about yep. the Slovakian yep. girl, like th there's really gonna need to be more teams. And why can't we dream about a team yeah, in sure. Arizona? And for you sure. talked about not even thinking about an NCAA team. Well, I can't see why we can't have a PHF team here one day. Maybe not soon. Maybe Arizona is not the first place they're looking, but never say never. Got the perfect arena for it. Yep. Just saying. Never say never. I think it would be absolutely unbelievable. Um, just well, the Minnesota State High School League just had the, the girls' state championship in two classes. They had 16 teams of girls there. Like the, It's blown up there. And I know we're not there yet, and the Kachinas have one team at each level, and it's, but it's coming. Like, they couldn't field one team for the Kachinas years ago. They've tried girls hockey here before, but now with support from the Coyotes, we got Lindsey Fry, what Matt Schott did for the program before he passed. That's the kind of grassroots you, you talked about, and it, it's only a matter of time, and it takes time, and it takes money, and it takes support. So if you haven't been to the mullet yet, and sometimes I know Coyotes tickets are out of reach, Check out the tickets for this for sure. Chris said it's GA is only $20 for a championship game. Yeah. So it gives you a <laughs> chance to see the mullet, see what the experience is like inside the mullet. So highly recommend it. Yep. Go go check it out. Yep, absolutely. Um, well, in just a few minutes, we're going to be joined by Brad Elliott Schlossman. Is that how you say his name? Yeah, of the Grand Forks Herald. He's a college hockey reporter because yesterday was Selection Sunday for the NCAA mm -hmm. men's tournament. But... As we await his call, Craig, your Wisconsin That's Badgers right, took home. See, the and I don't crow like Petey does, but I could have been crowing all day about the Badgers. I was shocked that you didn't like talk shit about it. It's yeah, it's it's good to see one of the two programs at UW delivering because the men's program has been a mess for a while, and I I love my guy Tony Granado. <laughs> 
We played in the same organization as kids, but I would have loved to see the Badgers doing more on the men's side. But the women got unseated. it done. And and from where? Talk about a Cinderella run. They were unbelievable. They've, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Unreal. and I think they are the first program to win seven I NCAA so. titles. Should I say that a little louder? Yeah. First program. I'm not even listening. So you, can talk you just you heard Wisconsin Badgers, and you just tuned it tuned out. out. You've been to Madison? <laughs> yes, yeah. I've been to the best Madison. college town in the Big Ten. Heard of it. <laughs> heard of it. Oh man, there's Brad. Well, there is perfect timing um, because okay. but it, we're going to talk some men's. As, as Brad tournament. jumps on, is is it Brad? Yeah. Can we bring him on? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we can. But because, well, I'm going to talk to Brad. Okay. I don't. I don't no, know boy. Brad. Oh God! Know, here this, we go. But this might this might go off the rails. Brad, again, Brad, get ready. Off. Sorry, Brad. We had our our first guest. We had the connection to Minnesota, and now with Brad, I was an actual graduate of the UND hockey program. And I just do you know how many beat writers they've ever had covering hockey at UND? How many in the history of UND hockey? Like the fighting suit to the fighting hockey. Two. Oh, okay. Verge Foss and Brad. <laughs> Wow. Awesome. You, Brad has, I think, has better hair than Verge because I think Ver, Verge bought him. <laughs> but I can't tell because Brad's got a hat. So I, I'm show, catching Brad. up to him. Yeah, are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why I got the hat on here, making sure. No, Verge still sits by me at the press box every single game. Um, what, uh, amazing resource. Uh, I hear uh, all sorts of stories about 1987. Um, I was there well, as a. Well, like I was, all, I was like in 1987. By the way, we're gonna go off the, Tell the, the North story. Pete. North Tell Dakota your connection. North <laughs> Dakota won the national championship in 1987 with with what I would consider one of the best assembled hockey teams ever. And I, I'll look at the Minnesota Golden Gophers this year with that top line. This was uh, Herkus, the Herkus Circus, Bobby yep. Joyce. It was a very, very good hockey team. The goaltender was. Eddie Belfort might have heard of him. Who's the backup? But I wasn't the backup. I was so far like I was like I was I didn't even get open the door. I was in section 101 J <laughs> like as the practice goalie that year. So all I did is get beat up because because you know what the third string goalie gets during practice? He gets beat up. You just beat up. You think they practice high hard ones on Eddie? No, on me. But that team was absolutely a, a elite hockey team. So it's it's amazing. You still get to hear all the stories about the 87 team. Oh, sorry. Now you can. We can go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. NCAA selection Sunday revealed the field of 16. Uh, what were your initial reactions when you saw this? Any surprises? W what were your thoughts when you saw it all break down? I, I, nothing really surprised me. Um, I thought the field could look a very, you know, the, the six in, in college hockey now, for those that don't know, uh, there's a formula that dictates who gets in the tournament. So we know exactly on, on selection Sunday who's in without any shred of doubt. It's not like basketball where you're sitting there wondering who's going to be in there, who's going to be out. We already know it is an objective formula, which I think is great. Um, and so we already knew who was going to be in. The only question is the site placements of teams and some of that. And it really turned out uh, fairly similar to what I thought it would end up being. Brad, one thing I want to ask about this tournament and the selection over the years, I've you've seen it in different geographic locations where it doesn't really suit the fan base it seems to me this year they're trying to be better not it's not perfect by any means because there is no western site um further yeah. west than than fargo and fargo you've got three minnesota teams which is fantastic yeah. so you know the championship game is going to be well attended for sure do you think they've done a better job this season than in past seasons in separating that by geographic regions I think so. And it, it also set up well for the committee that the teams were of the seeds where they were able to do that. If all the three seeds are from the East, well, they have really no choice but to send an Eastern three seed to Fargo. Um, you know, the way everything matched up, it was one of those, you know, for Fargo, it was one of those perfect set of circumstances where they could put them all there. The other thing they try to do is avoid, um, you know, interconference matchups in the first round. And now you have Minnesota, St. Cloud State, and Minnesota State Mankato are all in different conferences. That's so the, the way it's set up was really perfect for them to be able to do this, and, and they did it. So I, I think um, there are some years that even if they wanted to, it, it wouldn't work out. This year it did. We need to talk about North Dakota, too. And they lose to St. Cloud in overtime. <laughs> Was this is that a disappointment? I know it's the team you cover, North Dakota. Was that a disappointment for that team this year that they didn't make the final sixteen? For sure, you know I think they had really high hopes uh, for this team. The first two months they just gave up so many goals. Uh, they were really porous defensively. They fixed that in about December, 
and they were actually pretty good from December to the end of the year. Their record was good. Their goals against, they dropped by a full goal um, mm. in, in things turned around. However, uh, the first two months, they dug such a deep hole. They, they couldn't quite climb out of it. They were really close to climbing all the way out of it. Um, but they, they barely miss. And, it, you know, when you look back at it, it yes, the St. Cloud State loss uh, prevented them from advancing to the tournament potentially because then they would have had to beat seventh seed CC to get in, which is no gimme as Denver found out. But, um, it, you know, big picture, the first two months uh, cost them. And in college hockey, this pairwise formula it does not weigh the end of the season any more than the start. So game one of the season is just as important mm -hmm. as game 35. And so that's why, you know, sometimes you look at those October losses and everyone, oh, you know, not a big deal. Well, no, those those games are really important. It's kind of like the NHL. They're still worth two points. doesn't yeah. matter when they are. And if you dig yourself too big of a hole, sometimes you can't climb out. Well, we were talking about regions, and, of course, I have a dream someday that there will actually be a conference out west, and we'll see – yeah, more of the NCAA hockey tournament out this way. Um, that's for another day, though. But I wanted to ask you, as you look at the first round matchups, do you have any favorites? Do you have any games where you're like, hmm, what, what are the best first round matchups and, and who are your favorites in this tournament? You know, I, I think uh, there are several ones that jump out to me. I think the the regional in Manchester is really, really good. Um, yes. You know, Denver is the returning champion. I think Cornell's going to give them a game first round. I, I think uh, that is going to be a really interesting game. Just the way Cornell plays, they can defend really well. Uh, you know, they have some bigger forwards that can uh, make it hard on defensemen. Uh, this The other game there, BU has been playing really well, and they're playing a Western Michigan team that can score a lot of goals sometimes in a hurry. Um, sometimes you don't know what you're getting defensively from Western Michigan, but if they play well, you know, those are four teams that are all like legit frozen four contenders. I feel I, if, if any one of those teams come out of that region, including Cornell, who is the four seed, I won't be surprised at all. I think that region is going to be outstanding. Um, you know, I, I think in another one first round, I think Harvard and Ohio State's a really intriguing yeah, matchup like with um, Coyotes prospect John Farinacci. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, you know, here's one thing people uh, probably wouldn't guess off the top of their heads. The team in college hockey with the most NHL draft picks on it, Harvard. Wow. So wow. Harvard is a loaded team with a lot of talent. Sean Farrell, um, Matthew Coronado are dynamite players. And, you know, Harvard is a legit Frozen Four contender, I feel. Yeah. Um, they will have to go through Quinnipiac potentially. Quinnipiac plays Merrimack. Should be a good game. Um, Quinnipiac was my preseason favorite, so I got to stick with them right now, I feel. Um, however, I really look at Harvard as a team that's a team to watch out for. Not going to lie, I'm kind of rooting against Quinnipiac because Rand Pecknold was just a royal pain in the ass when I played against him in college. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Well, you talked about some of your favorites. What are some storylines that we should be looking out for maybe for those are not not as familiar with the college hockey landscape? Well, number one, you know, especially, you know, covering the NCHC, uh, Denver goalie Magnus Corona, he was their goalie for their team that won the title last year. He's a big senior. He was not playing down the stretch. He came in uh, to play in the semifinal game. He was back against CC. And then in the third period, he just kind of pulled himself. And after the game, asked uh, Coach David Carl, you know, what's the concern? He said, Magnus Corona's fine. And, and, you know, that, you know, we wanted to put in the other goalie, give us a different, you know, I think he even mentioned his puck moving skills. Um, you know, w whether you buy that or not is, you know, up for debate. But, uh, you know, I, I think even if Carl says there aren't injury concerns, I think everyone watching him skate off and go down the tunnel after he came off for a little bit is wondering, are there injury concerns or are there not? We don't know. So I think that is one thing that's uh, that definitely jumps out, um, you know, in in the Fargo regional, uh, you know, you see the Minnesota teams, 
You know, I think Minnesota should get past Canisius in the first round. I don't know who's going to win between St. Cloud State and Minnesota State Mankato, but Minnesota State Mankato has had Minnesota's number in the NCAA wow. tournament. And I'm sure if uh, th this is not the same Minnesota State team as the past few years, they lost a lot of guys, but I'm still sure if uh, Gopher fans see the Mavericks that come up there, that's going to bring back some bad memories. And, <laughs> and you know, maybe the players want to bury some of those. So, so we'll see there. Yeah, they'll be motivated after that uh, Big Ten title loss. Uh, okay, we're going to put you on the spot now. Give us your Frozen Four predictions. Oh, man, you are a little bit, but I'll, I'll, I'll roll with it here. You know what? I don't want to pick all the one seeds, so but I have to pick Quinnipiac. I had them before the season as my preseason number one. I got Denver right last year, so I'm on a roll right now. So we'll see. I, I'm going to stick with them, even though I do really like Harvard. Um, you know, Minnesota, I think, is the best team in Fargo. St. Cloud State, they had a defenseman, Dylan Anhorn, from Union uh, transfer, who is phenomenal for them. And since he went down with a season-ending injury in January, they're 500. Mm -hmm. and, and that includes the NCHC title last weekend. So they've been, you know, they've not been the same team. Minnesota State Mankato just snuck in. The, I don't know if you guys saw that, but they had an unbelievable rally to get in the tournament. They were down two goals with less than three minutes to go. Yep. They tied it with two extra attacker goals, one in overtime. I, I, I just think Minnesota is by far the best team in that regional. Um, in, in Manchester, I'm going to go with BU. I think they're playing really well right now. Um, you know, I, I think there's some questions with Denver coming in, and uh, BU seems to be on a roll for me. And uh, Allentown, I mean, this is so lame. I'm picking three one seeds and a two seed, really. <laughs> like, I can't do that. Like, <laughs> I think Michigan's the best team in Allentown. Uh, the one thing – uh Carter Guylander, the goalie for Colgate. If you're looking for a goalie that could steal a game, Carter Guylander can steal a game. Big Red Wings pick. Uh, Michigan Tech is the three seed in that regional. Blake Pietela can steal a game. So um, th they are in a regional where they're the best team, but they're, they have a couple of goalies in the regional that can steal games. A couple things I want to ask about, because as we already said, I'm a Minnesota guy, huge college guy too. The state mm -hmm. of Minnesota... Oh, has six NCAA Division One hockey teams, six of them, in three different conferences and in an independent. Brad, can you please fix that <laughs> and put them all in the same one and throw North Dakota and Wisconsin back in there so we can have some good old-fashioned rivalry? So get on that. That's first. Secondly, we, we know Matthew Nyes. He's a, a literally trained here in Arizona, and he's been outstanding for the University of Minnesota this year. I, I, he is a, a Hobie Baker finalist, isn't he? Matthew Nyes? Yeah. A lot of people so, think he's going to win it. Yep. So my question to you, because nope. Hobie Baker is the same weekend as the NCAA championship. The, the Frozen Four is the same weekend. Who do you have as your Hobie Baker finalist? Or your who, who are we looking for to be the best player in college hockey this year? Uh, first of all, I, you know, I think we all miss the old WCHA days where all those teams were there. Yes. Um, the, the final five and just turned into an amazing event. At St. Paul, so, yep. Yes. I'll, I'll work on that. Okay, I'm thanks, not sure Brad. how much pull I have with the Big Ten. Um, <laughs> yeah, they got a little bit of, yeah, a little sway uh, there. Yeah, uh, but, uh, you know, Hobie, I, I think this year it's, um, I think Adam Fantilli is the, you know, he, he's the leader by a substantial margin right now. You know, I think a lot of this is statistical based, and, and Matthew Nyes probably got off to too slow of a start. Um, yeah. I think Fantilli, his numbers are just too hard to ignore. I think he's the guy. The question for me is more who's going to be second and third, who's going to get on the, the podium, so to speak, and uh, be at the ceremony. I think Devin Levi has a great oh, chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought he should have won the Hobie last year. Yeah. He wasn't Sean's a happy now. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was amazing. Um, the, the Minnesota guys, uh, one thing, one risk they run is splitting goats. Yeah. Right. You know, you really have some guys who think Logan Cooley's better, some guys who think Matthew Nyes is better. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, I think the the call is usually after the regionals. So that's when they do the conference call. That's when everyone votes. So there's 10 finalists. They vote for the 10. And then they'll announce the top three. 
but there's not another round of voting. I think some people think that after the three, then they vote for the three. No, the, the three they announce are just the top three vote getters, but they have already, they already know who is one by the time they announce the top three. So um, I, I think Fantilli is going to be tough to beat. Well, thank you so much for your expertise. Um, we really appreciate it. We'll be looking forward to watching. Brad, are you in Grand Forks right now? I am. Is it snowing? Uh, amazingly, it stopped. So <laughs> wait, is wait, there snow stopped. on the ground like, though? How, how recently was it snowing? Oh, did, did, is there snow on the ground? I, I have a drift next to my uh, Buddy. driveway that's taller than me. <laughs> Buddy, Brad, do, I don't know if you know March this. March 20th. They have cars and houses here in Arizona. You could literally <laughs> move, move and be here. Just saying, it was 70 yeah. degrees and sunny. Well, actually, we have no, a this, cloud or two. Cloudy. Yeah, we have a cloud. A gray today. We so might have yeah. a cloud. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. I thought we were doing good because we were in the 20s. Now you guys just ruined 20s. my day here. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> Boy, howdy. Yeah, yeah no, oh, chance. no chance. Well, Brad, we, thank you so much and looking forward to following your coverage of the tournament. And we'll hopefully talk to you again soon. Anytime, guys. Great to chat with you. Yeah, awesome. thanks, bud, thanks, for doing that last minute, too. Yeah, I really appreciate, really appreciate it. Thanks, Brad. It. Awesome. Take care. Well, lots of Coyotes um, part of this. Well, not lots, but a couple of Coyotes parts of this. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk future Coyote Fantilli? I want to talk more about that in a second. Um, Sorry. But as soon as we I'm wrap, okay with number two. As soon as we wrap up here, I'm really excited because we got Burrito Express waiting for us in the kitchen. Yeah, we got um, it. So excited to eat Burrito Express. I've been craving it. Um, so it's, it's there, and I'm I'm excited DP's so he's already leaving yeah he's he completely walked Left. away just kidding um britain express has two new nil athletes asu football player elijah badger and softball star jazz hill they'll receive support and cash clothes and of course burritos uh, they have locations all over the valley tempe gilbert scottsdale so if you haven't tried burrito express definitely definitely give them a try because it's amazing and we are really excited because is it what is this week? Oh my God! This Friday is this Friday the tea party? It is, it is. Tea party. I, the, the, I can't believe it's March, so I have no idea what's going on. But <laughs> our next PH next tea party at Dobson Ranch is live. Come join us this Friday, March twenty fourth, for a night of golf, food, drinks, contests, prizes, and more. If you were there last time, it was an absolute blast. The PH next crew will be there. Suns fans, fellow diehards, to watch the Suns battle in the final stretch of the season against the Sacramento Kings. So check the link in the show notes to reserve your spot today and diehards check discord for your exclusive discount link. This is a huge perk to being a diehard getting 20% off our events as well as 20% off our merch access to our discord and access to the diehard only content on the website as well. So can't wait to see everybody this Friday. Well, I'm excited to keep an eye on Logan Cooley. We saw, yeah, I love first college of all, hockey. Logan Cooley's move or his goal in, I know they ended up losing that right. championship game, but he had a goal and an assist, I believe. So we'll be excited to see what he does in this tournament. And then, like you mentioned, John Farinacci for Harvard. And it was interesting hearing Brad say that Harvard is a team to watch. So. Harvard's really low key good. Like, I agree with him. Quinnipiac's a really good team, though. That's a, that's a tough draw, but watch out for Harvard. They, yeah. they have a chance to, but dude, to one make thing, a run. Same as March Madness we've seen with basketball this weekend. It's a one-game shot. And it is. A goalie gets hot. Happen, you take a yeah. bad penalty. Yep. Changes the whole thing. So it's it's, it's hard to predict. I love this tournament, wins. though. But I, I just too. love it. Like, uh, and I, I won't keep us long because I know we got to get off here. But this is how I cut my teeth. I, I, I covered the Badgers when I was still at Ooh. UW. Yeah, that's right, buddy. <laughs> and they went all the way to the NCAA championship game that year. Had a lead going into the third period. And then things didn't go so well against Lake Superior State. But... It's a blast covering college hockey. It's a completely different vibe than the NHL. It's incredible. It's 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 college sports, right? It's there's just I don't know. There's 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 so it's it's so real. It's so raw, and there's so much energy in the buildings. I I am really looking forward to watching this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. It all starts Thursday. Um, we got the Manchester Regional starts Thursday and Fargo. Um, and then Bridgeport and Allentown are Friday the 24th. So that's going to be all this weekend. As we know, the first round of any NCAA anything is always the best. Um, so you can catch all of those on ESPNU. And then the final four, or the Frozen Four, April 6th through 8th with the championship game on April 8th at 5 Arizona time. Coyotes play, I think, at 2.30 that day. So it should actually be a perfect, perfect roll in. Segue. You catch the Coyotes at 2.30 flip over to ESPN to watch the college hockey championship and it would be really cool if we got Minnesota Harvard for a oh, little coyote imagine? on coyotes prospect imagine? action 
So I don't know. Lots, lots of fun stuff to look forward to. It's a great time of year um, for sports right now with the PHF championship this weekend, the NCAA men's tournament going on um, for hockey. That is <laughs> because basketball. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. No, we're not talking basketball yeah. today. <laughs> and, and again, the, you know, the NCAA women's hockey yeah, tournament is over. They've it's already over. crowned a champion. I'm not sure if you knew that. Yeah. yeah not sure that. if you knew you were from Minnesota or if. From in Minnesota, but. The, Craig the, went to Wisconsin. There is, the, there is no Sioux women's program. No. Um, or Hawks, but they closed the program. There is a team of Bemidji State, though. That kind of stuff doesn't happen at UW. Jim Scanlon, head coach of the, the women's program at Bemidji State. They did not quite. They, they did not quite. And the by team. the way, I know they're not NCAA Division One, but ASU yeah. and U of A each have a women's club team. So support them as well. Go out mm-hmm. to those games yeah. if you just want to watch, like, watch sports, watch good sports. Support the women. Um, it's it's really cool. So this has been a really fun episode. Yeah. I really loved this one. It was good, informative, um, yeah. good hockey stuff. Loved it. So lots of stuff coming up. As we said, Coyotes are on the road this week. So be sure to tune in to all of our post game shows of course but as the ncaa tournament and the phf game on sunday do not miss it um i was trying to check if the tickets were on game time i don't think these specific tickets are on game time but as chris said 20 bucks 20 bucks phf website mullet arena go buy them it's going to be so much fun to watch a championship game championship hockey yep. Yep. in arizona it's rare okay um <laughs> but if you want to Go to wow. any other event. Sorry, it's the truth. True. If yeah, you want to exactly. go to yep. any other event, show, concert, sporting event, check out Game Time. It's the best place to buy tickets, and you can save up to sixty percent off when you buy last minute. And as always, the best way to support us is by buying your tickets with the link below in our description. So do that and let us know what you got your tickets to. You can also buy parking on Game Time as well. So it's really great. Any final thoughts before we head out? I have to hang out with you guys like three more times in the studio this week. I know because you're the no. coyotes are on the road. So I mean, you're, I, I mean, I us. I get to hang out with you guys. Three more times <laughs> I feel a little week. cold com- coming on. <laughs> 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 yeah, we got back to back games Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Friday, and then Sunday. So lots of coyotes games this week. <sighs> and we'll be live after every single one of them. So stay locked in on the Page and Exports YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe. And you're going to be here for them. Yeah, because yeah, they're on the buddy. road. Yeah, Not traveling. They're on the road. That's fine. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Bring in the leftovers from your St. Patty's Day party. We'll enjoy those. <laughs> um, but anyway, lots lots to get to. So like I said, subscribe to PHNX Sports on YouTube. Follow PHNX Sports across all social platforms. Lots of really, really exciting stuff going on. And you can follow us on Twitter at S. Peters Hockey, at Leah Merrill, at Craig S. Morgan, at Sean underscore DePause. Follow the show at PHNX underscore Coyotes. Like this video, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Enjoy the rest of your Monday, everybody, and we'll see you all tomorrow.